Hello everybody, I'm a single mom who likes to travel, especially by camper van or train. In my previous video I talked about our train trip to Shrewsbury to visit a friend. In this video I will share basic info on the town, what we did while being in Shrewsbury, what I did other times I visited and what I found might be interesting to do but haven't had the chance to get to yet, because by just doing a visit recap I wouldn't do Shrewsbury justice. I'll also share some pub and restaurant tips and options for staying with a motorhome. So if you're interested, stay tuned. By the way, sorry, this video took me a while. I'm currently in a job hunt, so that's taking a major part of my energy and time at the moment. Shrewsbury is the county town of Shropshire and is located in the Midwest of Great Britain. Wales is only a stone's throw away, reachable within a 30 minute car drive. Or even after only 22 minutes by train you reach the next stop in Wales, which would be for example Welshpool. According to Wikipedia, there are two ways to pronounce the town's name, which would be, here we go, a non-native speaker trying to get the pronunciation right, Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury. I still struggle today to pronounce its name right. First time I ever traveled there, I tried to buy tickets at the counter and asked for a ticket for Shrewsbury. Needless to say, the gentleman at the counter had to ask me to repeat my desired destination. The center of Shrewsbury lies in the loop of the river Severn, which in ancient times was also called Sabrina or Sabriana. With 354 kilometers long, it's the longest river of Great Britain and its Welsh name is Hafren. It's said to be named after a British princess, uh, to my understanding Welsh princess to be more exact. The story of Sabrina is sadly a tragic one and she's also said to be the protective goddess of the river. Shrewsbury has first documented mention already in the early 900s. Some sources even say the 7th century is where it starts. An old version of its name must have been Skorobesburik, which got founded by the Saxon rulers of Mercia. Burik meaning a burr, a fortified settlement, to retain control of a crossing of the river Severn. Shrewsbury is today called Tudor Town because you will find many beautiful timber buildings from the Tudor period, which lasted from 1485 to 1603. 660 buildings are mentioned to be listed, which is the English way of putting it on Denkmalschutz or preservation of sites of historic interest, for once the German way of saying it is not the longer one. Today Shrewsbury counts roughly 76,000 inhabitants. Five train lines run through it, also in direction of Wales as mentioned before. The probably best known person born in Shrewsbury is the naturalist, biologist and geologist Charles Darwin, who was born in 1809 and recognized for his studies on evolution. His resting place, however, is in Westminster Abbey in London. Our stay was planned to last from Friday night till Wednesday morning in May. As mentioned in my previous video, we arrived late at night and woke up to a beautiful sunrise. For Saturday, my friend had suggested to visit the exhibition of Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit was created by writer, illustrator, natural scientist and conservationist Beatrix Potter and published in 1902. Today, Peter Rabbit has his own website and seems to be a thing like Nijntje in the Netherlands, which would be Miffy in English or German, the little mole Krtek in the Czech Republic, he is also popular in Germany, or Biene Maya, Maya the bee in Germany. So after an easy morning, we went to the Shrewsbury Museum and Art Gallery, which is located quite in the center of the town center. It generally has free entry, which is great. The Peter Rabbit exhibition, however, did cost an entry fee. It was nicely put up and offered children opportunities to explore the room by doing tasks, to look for certain details, play or do some coloring, and for the parents it provided the possibility to sit down and rest, observing the children. As it was nearly closing time, we also did a super quick walk through the rest of the building, which I really can recommend. My daughter liked it so much, she insisted on going back there another day to again take a look at the rest of the museum and art gallery.
So we stayed until the museum closed and went for a bit of drugstore shopping at Pride Hill, about which I shall talk later in this video. The day ended with a gorgeously misty sunset. For Sunday, I can share one and a half things. We had a relaxed morning and during midday, we went to the center of Shrewsbury, took some photos there and had lunch in a lovely restaurant called Hole in the Wall, also located in the center of the town. The interesting part of it was that you could order and pay through the internet. I also would like to mention that another day when my daughter had to use the restrooms, they were so kind to let us use the toilets without us having ordered anything from them, while another restaurant had sent us away. In the afternoon, my friend took us to a family gathering so I cannot share any photos or footage of that. On Monday, my daughter picked Hickory Smokehouse for lunch, which is located more northwesternly of the Severn Loop. It also turned out to be a pleasant experience. As mentioned before, my daughter insisted to go to the museum once more, of which I put the pics earlier in this video, and after that we went on a boat cruise with Sabrina Boat Tours. The boat tour actually started across the street from Hickory Smokehouse restaurant. We saw some intriguing looking pubs from the boat and went past the Penguin Boat Club and the Shrewsbury School Boat Club while hearing some interesting stories about the sights to be spotted from the boat. Those sights weren't packed one next to the other, but the tour content was interesting nonetheless and also a bit funny, so I definitely can recommend hopping on the boat for a tour. Sabrina Boat Tours also offers a Severn shuttle at certain times to the West Midlands showgrounds, which I will get to in a bit. They also offer private hire, afternoon tea cruise and other things, such as even also walking tours around Shrewsbury for sea seasonal occasions, for example for Halloween and Christmas. On Tuesday we woke up to a beautiful sunrise. My daughter wasn't feeling so well, so we rested in the morning. The next thing we did was trying to go for afternoon tea. For this I had picked to try out the gallery tea rooms, which are also conveniently located in the center, just a bit down the street from the Shrewsbury Museum. I love having afternoon tea and since what people do in Germany for the afternoon is not quite comparable, I've started to aim for afternoon afternoon tea when I have the chance, which is normally when I'm in the UK or Ireland. Sadly, we were a bit too late as afternoon tea had to be ordered until midday, but I still could treat us with some scones and sandwiches. Scones is also something that I like to try having while being in the UK or Ireland. After that, we strolled around and ended up in a cozy alley called Grope Lane. There we came across a Harry Potter shop where we left some money. Bear Steps, Butcher Row, Fish Street and Grobe Lane are Shrewsbury's historic streets. The Bear Steps are said to be named after the Bear Inn pub, which was situated on the corner of Fish Street and Grobe Lane. It is said that in the area there used to be a bear pit. We then went inside the Market Hall, which was voted Britain's favorite market in 2018, 23 and 24. Main trading days are Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. I recommend taking some time to spend inside, downstairs and upstairs. There's a very nice coffee place and other food and restaurant booths and you can find items from local craftspeople and artists. And because it's inside, it's a recommendation for when the weather is wet from above. Wednesday morning it was quite rainy, so I decided to order a taxi. Feel free to check out my video on the homewards trip with a night train if you haven't yet. Other things to see and do. This is a collection of other things to see and do than what we did back in May. If you can share anything on these places, any experience, please leave a comment below. Also, if you find anything missing, please let us know as well. On Charles Darwin, who lived from 1809 to 1882, as mentioned before, Charles Darwin is probably the best known person from Shrewsbury. To my current information, Charles Darwin's birthplace, which is located on the street called The Mount, is still undergoing construction in order for it to be turned into a museum. You still can go and take a peek of it from the outside. I will put the Google Map links in the description below. Also, Charles Darwin's statue is located in front of the Shrewsbury Library in the center of the town. You can also take a walk in the so-called Doctor's Field, which is a part of Charles Darwin's childhood garden, which leads me to the next part of this video, which is out and about in the green. If you love to be out in the greenery and also close to some body of water, Doctor's Field will be a good choice. Essentially, it is a walk at the River Severn, which always has its own magic, as I find about rivers. When we were there in May, the walk was closed, but I hope it will be open again very soon, as it was really lovely. The Dingle and Quarry 
The quarry is a park located west in the Severn Loop. It's named after the fact that it used to be a quarry. Inside the park, you also find the Dingle, a sunken garden with beautiful flower displays and a music pavilion and a playground. Coincidentally, I saw that the National Cycle Route 81 runs through the quarry, which actually starts in Shrewsbury and ends in the 70 miles distant Welsh coastal town of Aberystwyth. I also like to take a look at churches when I'm visiting other places. The Shrewsbury Abbey was originally founded in the 11th century. It was built as a Benedictine monastery, of which most got destroyed in the 17th century during the English Civil War. The nave survived as a parish church. Some elements of Norman time survived, such as the west front facade with rounded arches and decorative stonework, and as mentioned, the nave with its thick columns and vaulted ceilings. Next to mention is St. Chad's, which is a church built in 1792 in the style of the Gothic Revival architecture. I took a few pictures inside while I was so lucky to witness a wedding ceremony there. The church, today referred to as St. Chad's, replaced a chapel that had become too small for the church service. Charles Darwin was baptized here, but according to sources he went to the Unitarian Church. By luck I found the Ebenezer Scrooge gravestone next to St. Chad's church, so maybe it's something Something also to check out. St. Elkman's Church stands at the highest point in town. It was founded more than 1,100 years ago, though it had to be rebuilt. The nave is from 1795 Georgian style, while the spire and tower are from the 15th century. Next to it, St. Julian's Tower dates from the 12th century, while the nave was constructed in the 1700s. It appears to now be owned by the Greek Orthodox Church. According to the website, it's possible to visit in the frame of a church service. You could also just slip in and out, but if you do, best do it careful and with respect. More buildings to see. The Shrewsbury Castle is located practically next to the Shrewsbury train station. It was built in the 11th century. Today, you can find inside a military museum, which is a historical collection of the Shropshire Regimental Museum. The prison is located on the other side of the train station than the Shrewsbury Castle, just outside the Severn Loop. It's also known as the Dana and was built in 1793. It was in operation until 2013. And for the past five years now, you can visit the prison for guided tours, seasonal special events, as well as paranormal investigations. The prison even offers to be a place to hire for weddings and much more. This one is definitely on my list to still visit. The Flex Mill Maltings. The Flex Mill Maltings is the site furthest away from the town center in this video. Located northeast of the train station, you can either take a 15 minute walk or take a 7 to 9 minute bus ride to the building. Finished in 1797, it claims to be the grandparent of skyscrapers, as it's the first multi floored iron framed building in the world. Among other purposes, it served as a flex mill and a maltings, as the name said. Surprise, surprise. Today, you can visit a mill exhibition or book a guided tour also to go and see the Jubilee Tower. You can find a cafe inside as well. Last but not least of the things to see and do is the Hive. It's an arts and entertainment venue that also works with vulnerable and disadvantaged people, so more of a neighborhood venue. It offers all kinds of events from movie nights over exhibitions to workshops and concerts. On their website I saw that they are financially struggling and trying to raise funds, so maybe you can give them also a bit of support. Shop, eat and drink. Shrewsbury offers some interesting market days, for example every second Saturday of the month an artisan market, and there is a farmer's market that seems to be once a month. For both, the square is the location, but other market events take place as well. Pride Hill and Shopping. Pride Hill is named after the wealthy wool trade merchant family from the 1200s. Today in the area around it you will find many nice shops ranging from bigger chains to individually owned stores. The Darwin Shopping Center is also located on Pride Hill. What I found nice is that inside the Darwin Center there is a soft play area called Darwin's Den. Children up to 8 years old are allowed to play inside. Darwin's Den is located on the middle level of the Darwin Center next to Marks and Spencers. Inside Prêt au Manger, you can view remains of the Bennett's Hall from the 13th century, which is thought to have been a merchant's house. So this is the perfect transition to the food and drink section. Shrewsbury has so many nice restaurants and pubs, it's hard to decide where to start. Following is a random list of places in the town center I have been to and remember to have enjoyed my time there. Bull's Head. Cool. 
Cromwell's, also called Cromwell's Tap House. Lion and Pheasant is a boutique hotel with a 2 A rosette restaurant inside. Henry Tudor Inn, also called Henry Tudor House or HTH, it's a tap house where back in the day the then called Earl Henry Tudor stayed last on the way to the Battle of Bosworth, after which he ascended to the throne as King Henry VII in 1486. The website writes established 1429, 700 years of pub heritage. Though if I calculate, I get to 600 years, so maybe somebody can help me to solve this riddle of calculating this right. The next Head. It is said to date back to the 16th century. In the rear of the pub building you can find the remains of Gibbon's mansion, dating back to 1570. The street story family home was built by Nicholas Gibbons, a prominent local lawyer and bailiff. This building was featured in a Christmas carol which was filmed there in 1984. It was, according to Scrooge, the foulest part of the town. The Shrewsbury Coffee House. It's an independent place to go to for a coffee, very close to to the train station. Offering also vegan food is topical but not standard. For the vegans, Shrewsbury even put up a dedicated page for which you'll find the link in the description below. Staying with a motorhome. I'm gonna keep this one to two options that I could find which are closer to the center. There are at least two more. The first one is the campground on the West Midlands showground. It is also a location for concerts and other outdoor events. The rating on search for sites looks pretty good with 8.12, but I myself haven't tried this one out yet. I actually stayed at the Frankville main car park. I tried it out two years ago because it's so close to the center and to where I could go and quickly meet my friend. It features a playground next to it. It got a 7.62 rating on search for sites. Back then we were the only ones to stay overnight. I recommend parking your vehicle close towards the back of the car park when you arrive from the side of the theater. We first parked close to the playground so my daughter had a short path to it but fortunately decided to move to the side back of the area. Fortunately because in the next morning, I believe it was a Saturday, there was a sports group playing loud music close to our initial parking spot and thank goodness we weren't close to it anymore. This is it. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. Please like, share and subscribe. I would be most excited to see you back on my channel very soon. Take care and bye bye.